हेलो यूट्यूब व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय शो रॉकेट मंडे एपिसोड नंबर थ्री सो टुडे वी गना टेक अ लुक इनटू रॉकेट इंजन्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो व्हाट इज अ रॉकेट इंजन इन सिंपलेस्ट टर्म इट इज अ रिएक्शन इंजन इट थ्रोज मास आउट एज अ एक्शन एंड एज अ रिएक्शन इट गेट्स पुस्ट बैक थर्ड लॉ ऑफ मोशन फ्रॉम आइजेक न्यूटन नाउ the another important part about rocket is that it has internal propellant so everything it needs it has internally that's why it can work in vacuum that's why it can work under water that's why it can work in atmosphere it is 100% independent it does not need atmosphere it does not need anything so let's look into it now you might ask how does it work well it has four parts four parts is first part is fuel or uh, sometimes in rocket industry we call them propellant then we ha have to pressurize it without pressurizing it it will just burn but it will not give you thrust so you have to pressurize it after pressurizing it you send it into combustion chamber and in that combustion chamber you ignite it and it goes through a nozzle and based on that you get your lift so these are the four part it takes fuel it pressurizes it, it burns it in the combustion chamber and exits it out of the nozzle nozzle is the uh, thing that actually provides the lift so you might want to know, figure out what is rocket fuel in simplest term generally rocket works on gases now you might say okay then let's fuel it up with gas problem is gas is not very dense so ideally we want to use solid but again the reaction is not uh, very stable or controllable so we try to use liquid as many time as we can like liquid fuel rocket has the best mileage possible so it uses combustion or a reaction to a catalyst to create hot gases that is the reaction mass that's why i said rocket engines are reactionary engine that is the action it takes by expelling hot gases it gets pushed back or in case it's expelling gas towards down direction and it's getting pushed up now you have to understand it all has to be self contained rocket cannot breathe it cannot like uh, how your car has air intake it does not have that luxury it has to be self contained so with fuel generally we also add a oxidizer now most of the time we try to use two part mixtures basically we have a fuel and we have oxidizer so fuel can be hydrogen kerosene rp1 and we oxidize them with uh, liquid oxygen because that's the best thing we can do and uh, we try to keep them as cold as possible and spacex has made some uh, unique trials around uh, their co cooling uh, rp1 also they uh, super cool liquid oxygen now they can't cool it too low because it will become a solid and then you can't pump it through a you know turbo pumps so this is the aspect of the fuel fuel has to be self contained and generally we have two part fuel system so now we have looked at the fuel we now come at to how do we pressurize it we use a turbo pump now turbo pump in simplest sense think of it is a turbo charger and only difference is much more complicated it works at much more extreme temperature the cold side goes up to uh, as cold as liquid hydrogen the hot side goes as high as the uh, melting temperature of the metal that's why these things are so expensive they are working at the extreme temperature range and they are also responsible for throttling the rocket engine this is uh, where the computer tells the turbocharger to like you know whether i want to in more power this will spin up faster they want less power this will spin up less to drive these things uh, we can do few things you can have battery power like how electron rocket does you can have a separate what is most commonly used a gas generator where you burn the fuel with oxidizer but generally you don't burn it to 100% because if you do that the temperature will go so high so we generally have too much oxygen little bit of fuel and it creates hot gases you don't want it to be like you know 3000 degrees celsius because it's going to melt it like we don't make it out of magic things it's going to melt so uh, we have a gas, a gas generator that controls this and this is what pressurizes the fuel so now you have a fuel now you have pressurized it now what now we put it into the combustion chamber suffice to say it is the most hot and the most stressed out part in the system now 
this part actually goes to full combustion like this is literally at the edge of melting point it requires cooling a lot of cooling like there are certain aspects that we can be used like uh, inside of these chambers can be coated with some sort of abrasion like uh, graphene so you get uh, you know abrasion as it burns off uh, it cools your system but generally they are not very popular generally they are not very popular so we generally run liquid hydrogen or kerosene or sometimes even liquid oxygen although that is not popular through uh, around the chamber walls to keep it cool because it's almost at the melting temperature so this is the most hottest part in a rocket and this requires the most advanced metallurgy possible so now we have fuel now we pressurize it now we burnt it next step so now we have looked at the fuel how we pressurize it, how we burn it, and uh, then we have to come at the final stage of a rocket, rocket nozzle. So all you have to understand is that while you're burning liquid hydrogen or kerosene in the presence of oxygen, all you are getting is hot pressurized gases. To turn that furnace-like scenario into a thrust, into something that you can you know, put uh, on base of a rocket and make the rocket go up, we employ nozzles. What does nozzle do? In simplest term, it turns the thermal energy into kinetic energy. Basically, it takes the temperature and makes it go whoosh. Now, it, uh, how does it do that? Nozzle is very simple and it's used everywhere. So, all you have is the chamber. You have a lot of pressure in that. Like, it's one to go out. Now, you force it through a throat or this part or this part. You force it through a throat and it gets higher speed. Now, you let it expand. This is the nozzle part. Once it's expand, it gains the speed. That's the it, it is um, the exhaust gas that you have in the chamber. It's very slow, like it's barely supersonic. Now, while you are giving it a room to expand in nozzle, it goes at hyper speed, uh, hypersonic speed. It's getting really fast. So that's how it does that kinetic and uh, kinetic energy conversion. So now you have turned the heat into energy, useful energy. Now it also comes with uh, one caveat, it requires altitude compensation. So these things you see, these are what no rocket nozzle could do. These two are acceptable, the last ones, this is not. Your rocket is not gonna be stable if you do this. Your rocket is really inefficient if you do this. This is perfect, perfectly balanced. And this, what happens uh, when you have nozzle that is over expanding. Now, because of atmospheric pressure drops as your rocket is going up, you have to understand you can't design one nozzle that can take care of it all. So how uh, we compensate is that if we have multi-stage rockets, we simply say, okay, on the first stage, which is uh, working under atmosphere, we're going to have a nozzle that is uh, suited for that. And if we have an engine that is firing in vacuum or like, you know, upper stage of a rocket, it will have an engine, that, uh, engine bell or nozzle that works in vacuum. So this is how we convert the thermal energy into actual physical kinetic energy. That was my presentation on how rocket engines works. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have learned something and if you liked it, please like. If you dislike it, please dislike. Leave a comment and subscribe. And if you're free, please press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.